So say again, the main things are? Uh, I guess kind of announcements or a section would be, uh, I'll, me or Roxanne will try to get the effects for the upper ties. And yeah, uh, I think you're right about just using tuple upwards as much as we can. Uh, like, And I think last time we were trying to do that, but we forgot to remove our call, which ended up in the regression. So yeah. we should be fixing that soon. Uh, what minor? Sorry? Uh, yeah, never mind. Nothing. Go ahead. No, that sounds good. I was reviewing one of the PRs that landed, and I, I saw oh. a funny, funny pattern that I um, was thinking about raising with you. Though I'm not actually sure if it's. Uh, okay. Uh, send send me a link or just I guess yeah. share right it's now. Not, it's not. I don't know if it's a problem. Okay. It's it's a minor net. I I'd rather discuss it on Zulip actually. So. Okay. All right. Let's do that then. Uh, I. What I did was I added another commit to the min capture so that it basically enables, well, it does two things. It enables the uh, feature by default or more like it just removes the part of the code that handles uh, if the feature gate is not set, which is like a very small snippet and updated the test cases so that the let underscore pattern becomes let unused sort of. So like instead of underscore becomes underscore X uh, in the three test cases that fail and bores try passed on uh, basically all architectures and stuff. Is and this, like, um, is there an open PR for this? Uh, yes, I can send a link right now. Uh, give me one second. Okay, and so we're leaving the let underscore equals X as the kind of to do in this PR, which. Yeah, uh, this, is, this is mostly for, okay, I send it on Zoom. Uh, oh, well, that was a bad way of sending it, Never mind. Uh, I forgot messenger does that. Uh, all right, uh, that's the beer. So essentially there's this thing at the end, uh, like the Boris test, which does that uh, update some UI tests because expert user literally runs in a different order a little bit than uh, upwards, not uh, in, in, in sort of like the intra visitor that we have. So when we use the uh, new uh, analysis, but basically we allocate reasons in a different order. Uh, Wait, you just sent me some. I don't know what you sent, but <laughs> like I sent a second link. Oh, right? I see, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah sorry. Uh, yeah, I. Yeah, I had sent it to like our group okay. last night, and then just. Okay. So yeah, Boris just pass and like, if you look at it, the changes that have been made to the actual code are basically, hey, do not initialize things. Yeah, this is cool. Um, so the tests look good. Yeah. I'm just skimming, most of this PR is test, or a lot of it is. Well, 90 per, yeah, it's like, Two are two. Uh, it's like uh, upwards mention. Sorry, upwards are RS and expert users are the ones that have like major changes. Everything mm -hmm. else is just uh, and a little bit in lightness because that required a bit more of. Uh, uh, okay, I have one one question. I see that you modified um, issue two nine nine four eight. Uh, the reason I did. I did that one was so that I can run all the test suite instead of removing tests because. Uh, I didn't want it to fail at the very start. Uh, if you look at it, it's uh, like in this PR, it's only part of the last commit, which is uh, only to run Boris uh, on oh, as default. Okay. It's not part of the actual change. So, so the plan is not to change those tests? No, I won't be changing them because we aren't enabling by default. It won't cause any problems. Okay, so you enabled it by default and ran all the tests and yeah. then... Oh, yeah, okay. because like we locally only run like kind of stage one and uh it just allows yeah. us to run everything that's fine that makes sense okay great um i can review this pr then i it looks uh, good okay right. i'll create a new I'll, I'll, PR, I'll, I guess, but yeah, I'll, create a new, I'll, I'll create a new one which does not have the force yeah come in. Right, right. i am uh the idea of um yeah it seems good yeah i think yeah, the next main thing for us is now just let underscore pattern. Yeah. So you want to dive into that a little bit? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, I 
I feel like I think you should try this one because I, I have some ideas, but I think you probably have yeah. better I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a doc and key. Yeah, I was gonna suggest uh, that. Um let me send you the link. Mm -hmm. Taking notes. Um and I guess I can should I share it? I will share this window. Mm -hmm. So it's in the recording and everything. Um, All right, nice. You see this, I guess. So I, let's see. The let underscore equals x problem. <laughs> um, so uh, what? <clears throat> it's We're going to need to do a little bit of. Um, I, I can put some very basic examples that we want at least these cases to work. Uh, sure, let me throw the example and we're going to need to do a little spelunking. Uh, uh, yeah. So, um, wait, where did you send the link to this? Is it on Zoolab? Or is uh, it on, no. Oh, I see it on chat. Now I see it in chat. Okay. I could put it in Thank Zoolab. you. Probably should. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, so, um, right. So the problem, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just as simple as this, right? Uh, to start. Yes. Um, and The challenge here is if we don't capture, if we don't see a read or other use of X, which we don't in this example, um, then it will not be added to the capture list in any form. Mm -hmm. Or in uh, particular, then, yeah, sorry, X yeah. will not be added. The capture list will not contain X or any sort of place that starts with X. Uh, I have one question around this. Uh, what if, like, in this case, we need X to X will X would have technically been moved? Uh, okay, actually, never mind. I was gonna say that this might like there might be problems when X is referred as a mutable or a immutable reference instead of being moved, but. Uh, that doesn't matter. We can. We just need to read. We don't actually need to move it here. So, yeah, that right. This is not a move closure and so on. Um, and so now the problem, as I understand it, the problem is that um, like that in and of itself is okay. There is a backwards compatibility question, but that's a separate thing. Uh, right. Um, yes. So the challenge is in T here construction, when we build or when we build the T here, mm -hmm. we need to translate let underscore equals X into something, but we can't represent or and, and normally we translate up bars like X into expressions that reference closure fields, e.g. self.x, right? Or, yeah. yeah. Um, but there is no field and there is no expression we can generate that represents x in this example. Oh, sorry, let me see who's calling me here. Oh, can you hold on one minute?
Okay. Um, so I lost track of where it was. All oh, right. Yeah, this is the fundamental problem. We can't generate mm -hmm. a key here expression at the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, there's a there's a another thing worth talking about. But go on, yeah. Uh, so the failure that happens happens in the build is not, doesn't happen in the mar build thir per folder. I just want to make sure that uh, that is. I don't know if it's invoked when the thir is built or it's invoked when we convert a thir into mar. So. Uh, yeah. Let me. I would expect. Yeah, let's look into that because that's important. Um, yeah, let me let me bring that. Up. Give me one second. I'll uh, open that. Uh, I sort of remember us saying. I I thought what we were discussing was that uh, the third should have removed this, but it did not, and we probably want to do it there. Then go figure it out in more. Uh, but uh, hold I on. Not this convert var. Yeah, I would expect it to ice around here. So it's not. Sorry, uh, sorry. one second. Uh, sorry, can you go back? I, I was trying to find the, uh, no, it does not ice around here. It ice around in uh, more build. I mean, um, it doesn't ice maybe yet, but like, oh, fine. why wouldn't it ice like, that this that is, is a fair question. No, that is a fair question as well. It seems like right. at this point we have to get the upvar index. So we look through the no. closure captures. Yes. We and won't find that. There, right? Wait, can you go back to where this no, but the it will try to look for it in subs or something, right? Like the call is coming from a okay. So here's what I think will actually happen in this code. It will look in the closure captures to find the variable. It's not going to find it. Treat it as a local variable. So it's going to get none. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to treat it like a local variable that's actually local to the closure. And, and then it's going to ice in mirror construction later on because yeah. there is no such variable. OK, that's fine. But I think the problem is really here, even though it doesn't. OK, ice. no, OK, no, I think you're right. OK, I think you're right. Um, and yeah, the, we're assuming this logic is basically assuming we can identify up bars because they're mm -hmm. all present in the map. Mm -hmm. but that's actually not true, which is interesting. Um, mm -hmm. But the fundamental challenge is what, what should this return for this case? Because, mm -hmm. you know, we can't build this kind of expression when there's no field to reference necessarily. Um, mm -hmm. That's one challenge. Yeah, so like, hold on, let me put a link here. Um, I think we will have a similar problem in liveness analysis as well, because um, the thing that you were suggesting yesterday to see if, uh, uh, let me just, give, give me one second, I'll point it to that. It might be easier to explain that way. Um, But basically what I did was in live analysis, there's a part where again, it checks for uh, upwards, basically for to check if things are being used correctly or not. Uh, and this way. So where's the Zoom chat? There it is. So yeah, send it in Zoom, but basically there as well, we kind of have this thing where um uh, and basically we skip accessing the variable but this would require some interesting uh more complicated way of checking if the place is being used or not in the future yeah this might be okay for liveness though but yes okay for that so um So there's one other, looking a little bit forward, 
we've talked about this before, but um, before we get into like how we might solve this, I just want to say that mm -hmm. if we had a case like, mm -hmm. yes, oh, okay, we had, we had this sort of simple case. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have a similar problem in that, or a related problem in that um, we can't translate. Uh, we expect to have a field corresponding to x dot zero here, right? Mm -hmm. So we can't translate the here expression x into a t here expression on its own. We can only translate x dot zero into a t here expression, right? Yes. Um, and why is this a problem? I thought we could drop individual fields, if I recall correctly. Uh, or I might be wrong. The I might use have of this drop here is not particularly important. That just meant to mean okay. some function that, that okay. accesses x dot zero. Um, mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to get at is this capture today, mm -hmm. it has a field. It's like equivalent to, you know, it has a field x that mm -hmm. captures U32, U32 or whatever, right? Yeah. Oh, I see. Tomorrow, it's going to have a field like X0 that captures a U32. Yes. And so what I'm trying to say is there's a related problem. It's not the same problem, but that when that this same function in the T here, this convert var, is not going to be able to return a T here expression that corresponds to the local variable x. Oh, oh, right. Okay, yes. That that was just like okay, yeah. We had to. Okay, that I see. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and we talked about that last time, I think, or or at least yes, we did. We have talked yeah. about it in the past. Mm -hmm. And so, well, the reason I mention that is that the solution to both of these problems might be to refactor this function so that instead of returning an expression. It returns an enum. Um, so let's see, maybe refactor, and it's probably not just this function uh, you know, for reasons that will become clear, but convert var to return an enum, which is like uh, okay. This is the, the normal case. Right. Mm -hmm. I probably I don't know whether it wants to be expression kind or expression uh, expert uh, for something. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll think about that. But let's just the uh, the idea is there. Yeah. Yeah. Some yeah. Expert thing. And then and then you could add like uh don't like read or something like up var not yeah like non existent up var or something mm -hmm. and we could add local partial path well, or on this later. Uh, so the idea of non-existent up var would be, that's what we would return in this case. So when we translate X, we're not actually gonna build yeah. an expression. We're gonna return non-existent up var, which would then, whoever calls convert var, like this function, convert path expert also has to be changed to return yeah, yeah, yeah. the uh, to propagate it up. Mm -hmm. And at some point, I don't know where does convert path expression get called from probably something called like convert expression, I assume. Mm -hmm. So this would propagate up. I don't know, like it might get tricky, but let's assume mm -hmm. it works. We propagate it up. And the idea is now what's going to happen is some of these. Uh, some of these other places, let me find a simple example. Like, okay, here's a binary operator, right? And mm -hmm. first it converts the left-hand side to an expression, and then it converts the right-hand side to an expression. These actually want real expressions. So at this point, you would have to have some kind of assertion mm -hmm. that says, I should have gotten this variant at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if not, that's some kind of bug. Mm -hmm. And you can ice. So. Mm -hmm. So the two ref function, let's see. Um, 
So convert var and friends would return this enum, the two ref that generates an expression, you know, would assert that it got a converted expert expert. But the main point is when you're actually translating let, mm -hmm. I don't know where that logic is. <laughs> uh, we need zero bindings on the left and uh, a place on the right to drop things. Right. And so exactly. And, and the actual logic that handles a let, I guess, is like here. Right. Uh, no, I think there's a statement kind of let. Or no, okay, this converts to a yeah, never mind. I think statement kind of local it's converts here. to statement kind of let somewhere. Yeah, here, here, here. Yes. So here we get here we call initializer to ref. Mm -hmm. This logic would change. Uh, would, this would be the only place we accept a non-existent up bar result without icing, basically. Mm -hmm. And we would assert that the pattern has no bindings and probably just generate no statement mm -hmm. or maybe a no op statement of some kind, right? Like, uh, yeah, we have to return uh, something here maybe. So maybe we uh, don't, is, I don't know. It looks like we default? don't. Okay. Uh, does Thur actually provide a no op statement that can be just put no, in place? I, okay. I don't know, maybe, but it looks like this, this If we don't need to then, be, yeah, why like, yeah, because a, it's accumulating into a vector, you can just not yeah. push anything. Yeah, oh. that, that's what I was thinking even with like more builds. So I was just like, maybe can I just skip things? Okay, yeah, sounds good. Think... Yeah, so, right, so that would work. I think that's the right strategy. Um, the night, the thing that we're assuming here is yeah, so mm, we're assuming okay. that if we find a non-existent up bar, mm -hmm. then it's correct that it's not there. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that's what this assertion is kind of double checking. Like, um, mm -hmm. hopefully that assertion uh, is correct. If we can come up with an example where there's a binding in the pattern mm -hmm. and there's no up and the non-existent up bar, that'd be interesting. But I. Mm -hmm. Don't I think, think so. and like figuring out if it's non-existing up part could be, I think, as easy as checking if up parts mentioned even mentions the root variable of the place. And I think that's really good from there. Yeah, something like that. If it's not in the table, but it is mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. basically. Um, yeah, or there's, there, I'm sure there's some other ways we can do it, but the, mm -hmm. so I think that would work. And then the reason I brought up this looking uh, forward example one. is that yes. then because right now we're not handling that yet, right? But later we may, ref I think we're gonna want a similar enum. So, mm -hmm. and that would be like partial path. So that would be a case where, you know, we converted X, but we only have a field for X dot zero. Mm -hmm. So we need to return like some partial information mm -hmm. so that when we convert the, dot zero, we can create the self dot x zero t here expression we need. Um, okay, so since we are capturing x dot zero, uh, um, we would need a way to capture x in some capacity, right? And I think this is where that's getting at. Yes, yeah, so um, I don't think we would be capturing x in any capacity. Well, okay. Actually, there's an interesting question. Well, oh, never mind. I don't think we would like at least the naive version of the T here code mm -hmm. would actually generate a field. We would, we would have no field that corresponds to X, right? It would only have a field that yeah, corresponds to the sure. path. But we still need to return something that starts off not, X, right? It's, I don't think it's non-existent up far because 
I that, think that's yeah. that just propagates up all the way. This is a different case. This is like partially <laughs> exactly captured up far. So that would be a new a new entry in the enum, and mm -hmm. it is going to propagate. I think in the same way, like most this same logic uh, is that most most uses just assert that it, that they got a fully formed expression that's still true i guess my question was less around uh the pipelining this information around the code more around uh building that actual expression so uh, i just want to make sure that it is hmm. since we're not capturing x in its entirety it's safe to still start off the expression that we're going to be building and convert variable convert up for starting off x and then apply those projections that we discussed last time. Mm. So if you go back, I don't to know if I understand address, you. So uh, if you go back to the convert work code, uh huh. Uh, which is no wrong file. Okay. Yeah, I think this is another one. It's expert. Yeah. So convert var. We have a convert up var function. Uh, yeah. Basically, my my question around here is like. Since uh, over here we start building expressions, which are which basically return some reference to X or like whatever the upper we're capturing. What we had discussed last time was that instead of doing that, we will now also apply projections on top of it that basically are the projections of the place that we're trying to capture. Uh, my question is, is it like, just wanna make sure that it's fine to start that, since X is not captured completely, it's fine to capture start that of expression of X directly in here? I think I wouldn't. I think if it's not completely captured, you would return some special variant here. Mm -hmm. And then later, the, let's see. We're, let, let, me, let me dig in. So the here, the here is going to look like, the here for, and we, we can talk about, there's one other, sorry. Um, mm -hmm. Right? Okay, yeah. And so when we type, when we, when we type expression kind field, or when we convert it, that's this code, right? Okay. Today. Yeah. Um, let me just throw a link in there for Posterity. So what that does is it first converts the source to an expression mm -hmm. and then wraps that in an expression kind field, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And this is the source. So source is like our X itself. Yeah. Yeah. And then that invokes convert var. Mm -hmm. which today returns an expression. So what I imagine would happen is tomorrow, this will return a expression partial, kind partial, which has some information. I don't know exactly what, we'll have to figure that out mm -hmm. about the fact that it's X. And then mm -hmm. here today, this like wraps in a expression kind field. Tomorrow it would say, if we got back a partial path, mm -hmm. And adding x.0 makes a complete up bar match. Mm -hmm. You know, then return self.x0 reference to the field. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. that is that is the same logic. This is where the all those all that logic from convert bar gets mm -hmm. applied. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, can you go back quickly to the code that we have? So again, we are creating this field new with that field index. Again, we at some oh we don't yeah we so we still need the LHS right, which is what I'm yeah. So let me let me just like write some pseudocode to to sketch it. I think it would look sort of like this. This is today. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be something like I don't know what this equal sign is. Today. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, it's probably not two ref, but you know, it's, whatever it is going to be two expert, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. Um, and then what did we call this, you know, 
Parsh, mm-hmm. uh, we ended up, oh, that's Good fine. There's a converted expert or something. So this is the easy case. This is like the. This is like completely capture. Yeah, and in this case, we basically just do the same thing we did before. Um, but this is the, the more interesting case. So non-existent up bar or whatever, we'll just propagate it through, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and then partial path. All right, this is the more interesting case where we'll kind of say, um, let's, I don't know exactly what's gonna go in here. I'm still a little bit confused about it, but I think it would be, one way to think about it might be like a set of oh, possible right. paths. Okay. I think that's maybe not the most efficient, but let's just, logically it kind of makes sense. Okay. And you might say if, or let's do it like this. Let's assume that it passes back some kind of place. Okay. Yeah, that's whatever, good enough. For whatever the idea. key is into those tables. Yeah. That we, have, right? and we would yeah. say like, let place one equals place Play. with a uh, field projection. <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. So in our, this would be like x dot zero in our example, and then we would say if there is an up bar. Um, for place one, you know, um, mm-hmm. then we would say returns ex- expression for self dot f <laughs> appropriately mm-hmm. correct. Mm-hmm. Else return partial path place one, something like that. I am still confused. I'm sorry. Uh, so, okay, let me let me uh, just go through and see what uh, my understanding of this code is. Okay, we saw 30 minutes. Good. Uh, so, what are we what we're doing is we say, hey, take this place. This is a field place. Uh, give me uh, a partial con- convert. Try converting this. We'll try to find the uh, any ancestor of that place in our list of captured places. Uh, and so. Yes, we put that there. And if it's a complete up bar, which basically means the place that we got back did not have any projections, then we do the return self dot uh, and we did our friends. Otherwise we basically escalate it up and say, some, let something else handle it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so why I get, do that? Yes, okay. A, why? And I still don't see how this ends up getting finally resolved. So this is the part where you get confused. Right. Yes. Okay, so this is why. So imagine that, let's do a different example to see why, because you don't need it for this example. So imagine our example is like. This is just the double. Okay, I guess that works for now. I'll just modify it. I just wanted to. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So. Mm-hmm. Let's do this. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So let me think. Is that capturing all the things I want? Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, this will be okay for now. So there's two expressions here, right? Mm-hmm. Or we will have two fields in our closure. Mm-hmm. X zero zero and X one. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, our sort of capture table. I forget exactly how your data structure looks, but I think it's something like this, you know. It will capture starting off X, it will have zero, zero, and then it will have an, uh, which points to whatever capture kind it is. And then it will have another entry in that same vector, which is X1. Yeah. We'll just call, uh, uh, well, let's, let's, okay. let's, let's assume it was like this, which I think is. Uh, uh, by ref in this case, but yeah. Yeah. Sure, by ref. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, um, either works. Yeah, it's yeah, it's basically that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, 
So what I'm imagining now is when we are converting x.0.0, .0, that is here like field zero, field zero. Yeah. Uh, and so the idea would be we'll start here, it'll recurse, it'll recurse. At this point, uh, it'll return partial path x. Right. And now we get back here, we're processing the field. Oh, uh, I see. I see what you're so saying. So we'll return partial path x dot zero. Mm -hmm. And now we say, ah, x dot zero dot zero, we have a field for that. Mm -hmm. So we construct star self dot x zero zero um, mm -hmm. and return that. And OK, that's what he meant by complete ones. OK, I thought you were really just going for if we do ever capture x in its entirety when you said complete up or OK, this makes sense. I think Maybe. we should re oh. rename complete to also just ancestor. Because at some point, if we have an ancestor, uh, uh, then that works. Yeah. And, right. So another example, which I think this may be related to what you were going to say. Uh, an interesting example is this one. Um, yeah. Because now our captures uh, x dot one isn't really very interesting, but that's okay. Now our captures look like this. Uh, x zero, just that, yes. Right. And so now what will happen? By value, uh, it's probably still by ref because it's a copy. Oh, it's a yeah, okay, it's an integer, yes, yeah, yes, we don't know. What happened here is at this point, we won't have a partial path anymore, we'll have this a... is actually a full match, so we'll get star mm -hmm. self dot x zero, and then here we'll you know, this construct, this construct, yeah, um, just like normal. Mm -hmm. I don't know why this is jumping around, but there you go. Yeah, so I think this should work. What I realize now is, as we talk this through, is you may not want, uh, where's the enum, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Like the complete up for one, the expression thing? This yeah. non-existent thing? This is probably a fine place to start for now. Mm -hmm. But when we generalize to minimal, mm -hmm. to this, this more general, Precise thing. We, we, may want, we may want to just remove this variant and replace it with partial path. It depends. We, can, we can look, but like either way, we uh, could have a partial path with an option, and the option could be none, and we just said, oh, "I just found nothing for this." Yeah, maybe the only I'm thinking about. There's one case I wanted to think about, and, and maybe we should just talk it out right now. So I'm thinking I'm a little bit. Oh, what is going on here? This must be some wacky, uh, wacky corner of Markdown. I don't know. Anyway. Um, <laughs> One, one example I was a little bit nervous about that we can talk about, let's do it now because it's relevant, is something like this. Uh, um, oh, I think I know where this is going. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, this should just so here, we should capture, I think we're going to capture x.0 um, and x.1. And yes. Yeah. But we can't generate the t here. Uh, we actually are kind of stuck here because um, we can't generate the t here that we want, right? Uh, because we're going to have translating x yields a partial path. Mm -hmm. But we need to generate a let like y z equals translation of x. Mm -hmm. um, like we don't have a whole path. that's really annoying, and I don't know what I think the answer is to that. Wait, um, is this is this because x will be completely moved and we can't do that in two statements? Hold on. Uh, I, I mean, give me one second. I have to run to the to the bathroom. <laughs> All right.
Okay, so what were you asking exactly? Um, uh, I was asking more, okay, I guess question was that the, can we not generate two let convert this one let statement into two in some sense? One like, second, let me see what this call is. Okay, sorry. Uh, getting a lot of calls today. Um, so the problem here is, I mean, it's just a matter of how we, like, currently it's mere construction that does that has the job of taking a pattern and mm -hmm. turning it into statement, like individual assignments. Mm -hmm. And you can see that here, right? We have a statement kind let. Mm -hmm. And it takes a pattern and an initializer expression. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so this this really gets turned into T here that looks pretty much exactly like it looks yes. here. And once we get to near, it's going to get translated into Y is X dot zero. That is. But unfortunately, uh, the T here doesn't do that. So, so that's kind of a drag. I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know what the right answer is here because, so like the wrong answer is to, you know, solve this all by the hacky solution we talked about way in the beginning of making a false read. Mm -hmm. We could do that for now and leave it as a fix me, but it's not great. Cause it's not really uh, what we want. I you know? also am concerned if what happens if one of these were let's say an underscore. So like we are ignoring one of them, right? So sure. yeah. will, will T here, I'm assuming T here will do the same thing, but we would need to handle this case in more where we, you know, go and uh, have to ignore that as a capture. Or thing. Yeah, I don't think that's uh, making it much harder, but it's true. Okay. Um, yeah. The, so there's two. I see really two. Yeah. Okay. I guess I see. Let's let's look at the possible solutions. So, you know, one of them is mess up the language <laughs> by calling this a read of x, uh, you know, pro, easy, con, that counterintuitive, you know, affects users. Yeah. We don't want to do that if we can avoid it. So the other solution is that we can kind of change who's responsible for desugaring right. up our mm -hmm. uh, fields mm -hmm. and push that a little more to yeah, so T her. basically extend T here with partial path um, and push the up bar conversion, up bar to field conversion into mirror construction. Mm -hmm. um, in a way, nothing changes or like, it's very similar to what I wrote above, except that instead of this not being a real expression, it would be a real expression. Mm -hmm. Um, I suppose. Uh, I have to think a little bit about how that works, but you know, it's plausible. It might be the right approach. So basically, we leave the responsibility of handling with all that stuff onto Mur. Right, and so the Mur construction will, will take care of it. Uh, what about we pull in some of the responsibility of changing the let statement into T here instead of? pushing this one over there, which one is 
yeah, that's the next option is extend T here with ability to desugar let statements. And the question is, is it only let statements or does it have to handle all matches? I think it has to handle all matches because it's not- It's a pattern essentially, right? Yeah, there so might be a slight difference because we might actually already I, I let me check something. Mm -hmm. If you do um let's see. So if you have a variable and you borrow it mm -hmm. and we use the borrow, right? We saw earlier that this is not an error. This is not considered mm -hmm. a reading by the borrow checker. Mm -hmm. But this. That would be because, oh, interesting. Oh, this is also not, which is a little surprising to me, actually. I thought oh, X was marked as a shared reference when you had a match X. I sort of thought so too. Wait. But it appears to not be true. Um, interesting. I don't know quite how that. I thought there was a fake, oh no, wait. Oh, and because you never read actually use the value, I guess that's what might just be. Uh... Yeah. I'm oh, right, right. right. I'm not the okay. Right yeah, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That's it. Okay, can you turn that into an underscore, I guess? Yeah, but hold on a second. Let me, Um. let's first. Okay, so it's definitely an error if there are two patterns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And it's definitely an error if you have a binding. It doesn't appear to be an error with, hmm. however, without a binding. So yeah, so what that suggests to me is we have to be able to express X also in this position. Mm -hmm. So it's really not just desugar, but also match. And that's tricky for another reason, which is that I believe exhaustiveness checking operates on T here, mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not mistaken. So okay. we don't, we really don't wanna be doing desugaring, like de exhaustive is checking has to come before we desugar, not after. And- Yes, yes. I think this is not really feasible. Okay, so okay. Then, that logic is pretty complicated and I don't I, really want to move it. Um, no, nah, that's, that's fair. I don't want to call that, I guess. That so I think that suggests we're going to need to move this stuff into mirror, which is unfortunate, but um, but okay. It probably doesn't affect us in the short term. Like we probably yeah. still, still want to do this non-existent up bar thing. Mm -hmm. It's just that when we extend it, we'll probably not change this at all, but we'll just handle partial paths by We can, I, 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 I'm thinking now, sorry. I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to figure it out. But when we, we'll, we'll do something such that a partial path turns into an expression. Mm -hmm. I think it might just be that all up bars. You're on yeah, partial we, path. yeah, maybe we make an expression kind. It's not partial path, but it's like up bar path. And, mm -hmm. and we do some logic to grow it or, Mm -hmm. Either we handle that in the mirror, but I think it might be nicer to handle it in T here, such mm -hmm. that we we wind up with the full path once we get to mirror, so that mm -hmm. like all mirror has to do is. Um, oh no, I guess it has. Sorry, no, I guess it it has to kind of be in the mirror. Never mind. Right. So what what we would we'd have some up bar node, and it would, and mirror would do the same logic I'm talking about here probably of okay. when you convert into mirror, mm -hmm. it'll, uh, we'll have to look at the code, but it'll do something similar of like, oh, I don't have enough things to build a place yet. So mm -hmm. I have to, I don't have enough context to build a place. Um, it's gonna Wait, be kind so of annoying. <laughs> there's um, a lot of, there's gonna be a uh, little 
I guess it's going to be like a kind of variation on place that's like an in. A, oh, we already have. Uh huh. Wait. Hold on. Okay, so, I am. I'll be honest. I'm starting to kind of lose you a little bit. Uh, but uh, I'm yeah, hoping once I get into it, I'll probably figure out a bit more. I'm not surprised. Luckily, we don't have to write this code. Today. Um, yeah. so I just remembered though, there's one good thing. Mm -hmm. Which is that mirror distinguishes a place that is under construction mm -hmm. from a fully constructed place. Okay. The reason that's relevant is that we'll have to see when we get there, but it might be that we only have to worry about the upvar case for a place that's under construction. Okay. Oh, um, essentially we do, we say, oh, if we weren't able to basically construct a place for this for whatever reason and no let bindings remove the statement. Um, no, sorry. Okay. So there's two parts. I think that the first thing we talked about today Mm -hmm. of having T here construction, understand the idea of there is no, up for there it. is no entry for this up bar. That we just have to do. Yes. Um, or at least it's the easiest thing to do. And it's probably how I would handle this in the short term in order to make the let underscore equals X. Mm -hmm. Not ice. Sorry, I'm having one further thought, which is I'm wondering, given that this is a fix me, maybe we should just not solve this problem. Okay. Of let underscore equals x. Okay. Let it keep icing, mm -hmm. and instead try to solve the partial path problem. Mm -hmm. And see if we can reuse it, kind of. Yeah, because once we've figured out how that's actually going to work, mm -hmm. then that may tell us, oh, we can use, it'll be easy to extend that mechanism mm -hmm. to handle that underscore equals X mm -hmm. uh, or maybe not. Okay, sounds good. But I think I think you're not gonna start on this this week, right? Uh, maybe or the weekend a little bit. Uh, I don't know yet. I at least, yeah, I'll, I'll discuss with the team. I think there are a couple people with time so we can start looking into it. I was thinking more around sort of creating some, uh, well, creating a couple base commits and then like splitting into groups and sort of doing, yeah, kind of handle both things. No. Okay, because we're gonna need to do a little more discussion. Uh, that works too. Like, but uh, it's probably it, a good idea for you all to do some reading and just digging. like look at the code, I guess. Yeah, so that I don't lose you as fast. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah um, no, that's fair. But I don't quite know what. Um, I think it should look like either. So I okay. Have to uh, also, if you make any kind of major changes, how things are represented within the Mer or her side, do we need anything from the compiler teams on that, or like any kind of proposal? No, no. The T here okay. is not. I don't think it's such a big deal to modify. We're definitely going to have to modify T here, but that's not a big deal. Okay. Uh, I don't think we'll modify Mir. We just have to. Okay. We'll make the mirror construction a little more complicated, but the mirror itself okay. should be the same. Okay. Okay. As long as, yeah, there's. The only thing I'm wondering about now, mm -hmm. there's, all right, we have to go because I have another call, but. Okay. There's one other right. thought that's kicking in my head and I'll, I'll write about it on Google. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. See ya. Uh,